Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Um, reading this week. For reading this week, we've been doing fairy tales, all right? And you've been listening to them and then logging the basic elements of those fairy tales. I've been kind of checking those. You guys have been doing a pretty good job of that. Some of you need to go back and do a couple more because you just kind of skipped over that. But again, the point of that is I can recount stories including fables, folk tales, and myths from diverse cultures. So a fable is kind of like a fairy tale in that a fable, the tortoise and the hare is an example of a fable. It is a story just with a moral or life lesson. Last week, we did lots of morals, all right? Folk tales is more what a fairy tale is. Folk tales generally don't have as much magic, but otherwise, folk tales and fairy tales are almost interchangeable, all right? And, and then finally, the last one, myths, all right? Myths are kind of like folk tales that include the magical, and they are used to explain things that people did not understand, all right? Um, way back in the day, a couple thousand years ago, People did not know as much about science and technology as we do now. And so they'd come up with uh, explanations for why things occurred. For example, in Greek culture, there was a god who put the sun in his chariot and then drove across the sky every day. And that is why the sun went across the sky. Um, obviously, we know that's not how it goes. It's actually, we're going around the sun now and, that's, and it just appears to us like it's going across the sky. But that is essentially what a myth is. Now, for this week, um, because we're actually starting on the writing of the fairy tale and starting a couple other things, I'm not really asking you to do anything except listen to the stories and then think about what you're hearing. I am going to read the stories myself because I heard that a lot of you actually like my reading. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, there's probably not going to be as many funny voices, but for these fairy, or for these myths because I'm not going to be reading fairy tales I want you to I chose ones that specifically have um, filtered into our everyday life all right so I'm gonna start with some Norse myths which is the area around Norway Sweden Iceland if you think about Vikings um, you know guys with the, the horns on the helmets usually is that on TV that's how they're portrayed that culture came up with some of these myths. And you are actually probably already familiar with many of the characters in the myths. It is led by Odin, who's kind of the king, all right? You might know Odin from some of the Thor movies. Oh, that brings up Thor. Thor is actually the thunder god, and he, he is the focal point of Norse mythology. Um, he has a brother, Loki, but Loki is also sometimes Odin's brother, too. That switches, and Freya is Odin's wife. It kind of changes depending on where you were, but the general myths are the same. Tomorrow, I'm gonna to read you a little bit about Thor, but today, I'm gonna to read you this myth, the Valkyries and Valhalla. So, you have to understand, Norse Viking uh, culture, kind of very warlike, very violent. So Valhalla was this uh, place where all the once the warriors died in battle, that's where they went. All right, that was Valhalla. Um, the Valkyries were well. I'll explain what the Valkyries were. But uh, and yes, I want you, all you have to do is listen. You don't have to do anything else for this. All right, the Valkyries and Valhalla. Odin needed such a horse to take him like a storm wind from Asgard to battlefields on Earth. Asgard is where the, the gods live. You might also know that from the Marvel movies. There were many battlefields, for just as gods had fought in holy Asgard, men were fighting on earth. They fought each other for gold. They fought each other for land. They fought mm -hmm. each other for the fun of fighting. And Odin was no longer only the great all-father and the wise wanderer. He was also the furious god of storm and war as well. Then he was called Yig. The terrible one. That's YGG, no fouls. Um, so yeah, Odin, flawed gods, all right? And the gods were not, they were, they were sometimes mean. When he was seen in the gray light of dawn racing his eight-legged steed over the towering clouds, people knew that somewhere a bloody battle would soon be fought. Both armies would be calling loudly to Odin, praying for the victory that he alone could give. 
With his single eye flashing under a golden helmet and his huge body wrapped in a coat of mail, Odin would arrive at the battlefield. He would quickly decide who was to win, and then he would throw his spear, the Gungnir, over the host that must lose. He always tried to make the better warrior win, but sometimes it was a hard choice, especially when good men were fighting one another. Odin was followed by a band of tall and handsome warrior maidens clad in shining army with the winged helmets on their heads. As they stormed through the clouds, their swords gleamed like lightning and the foam from their panting steeds fell to the ground as hail. They were the Valkyries, Odin's maidens. Most of them were from Asgard, daughters of goddesses, but once in a while, Odin was so taken by the brave spirit of a maiden on earth that he let her join the ranks of the Valkyries. They did not go to Asgard to live, but Odin gave them lovely white cloaks of swan's feathers so they could fly around Midgard even when there were no battles raging. Proud was the hero who got a Valkyrie for a wife. The Valkyries chose who would die in battle and brought the dead heroes up to Asgard. There they lived a life of glory in Odin's guest house, Valhalla. Odin foresaw that sooner or later a final battle between the Azir gods and the forces of destruction would have to be fought, and he wanted a great army of good soldiers at his side. And so it was during a battle a warrior would feel a light tap on his shoulder, turning. He would see a maiden with a winged helmet, and then he would know that he had been chosen as one of Odin's heroes. With reckless fear, he would leap forward to bring down as many of the enemy as he could until he himself fell in battle. Then the Valkyrie would sweep his fallen body from the ground and throw him across the saddle and ride with him to Asgard. While far down below the galloping hoofs of her horse, the earth faded away. In Asgard, the horse would alight in a grove where all the trees bore leaves of gold. The leaves would twinkle merrily as the Valkyrie led her hero up the well-trodden path to Valhalla. And if the hero had acted with great valor, Odin himself would offer him a welcoming drink of sweet mead. That's kind of like beer. Then the warrior would be led into the hall to take a seat among Odin's heroes and lead a life of riotous feasting and fighting. So in Valhalla, you ate and you fought, and that is what you did. Here's a here's a picture. All right, you got looks like um, this is one of the Valkyries. She's collecting one of the heroes. So obviously this guy was fighting well in the battle. So Odin, so Odin wants him to fight on his side. So he has the Valkyries collect him and take him up to the, this magical land of Asgard, where all you do is eat and fight, eat and fight. And you can actually you can see the little battle below on the bottom. But yes. Valhalla was the greatest of all buildings. It was so big that one could hardly see the opposite wall. 540 doors could be flung open, each of them so enormously wide that almost a thousand men could march through side by side. Strong spears held up the roof, which was shingled with round shields. The walls of the hall were hung, not with the soft tapestries, but with coats of mail and helmets. A long fire blazed down the middle of the hall, and on the benches that lined it on both sides, there was room for thousands upon thousands of Odin's heroes. There was never a lack of space for a newcomer in Valhalla. The Valkyries rushed about, keeping the heroes' platters filled with food and their drinking horns overflowing with beer and sweet mead. There was no end to the heroes eating and drinking. A strange goat lived on the roof of Valhalla, grazing on the branches of an overhanging tree. Instead of milk, mead flowed from her udder, so much mead that the kettles put out to catch it could barely be kept from overflowing. However, heartily, the heroes drank. A great hog kept them well supplied with fresh meat. Every morning, the hog was butchered, boiled, and devoured. At night, it would be alive again to be butchered the next morning and eaten again. Nothing tasted better to the tongues of dead heroes than fresh pork. Interesting. So they had a duck, they had a pig that they they would eat every day, and then it would magically come back at night, and then they'd eat it the next day. At the north wall of Valhalla was Odin's seat of honor, and there he sat when he came to feast with his heroes. Near him sat four of his sons: Tyre the Hod, Vidar, and Bali, war gods all. 
Tyre ate with his left hand since Fenris the wolf had bitten off his right hand. He was the bravest of the brave, and he urged men to war. Hod, who was very strong, was blind, and he led raging warriors into bloody battles. Right, let me, oh, I'll show you the picture. Here they are feasting. All right. You see that really long table, and supposedly those are all the heroes that they've collected for Odin's army. When the feasting was over and Odin had retired, the heroes rolled over and went to sleep on benches strewn with fresh hay. In the morning, the golden cock that perched on Baha's roof roused them with his crowing. That's a rooster. The heroes woke up in a quarrelsome mood. They chewed toadstools to get themselves into a raging frenzy. Then, as wild berserkers, they jumped up from the benches, reaching for their coats of mail and weapons, and rushed out to fight one another on the field of Ida. It was no sham battle. Every hero fought furiously, and soon the huge field was strewn with heads and limbs. But when the dinner bell rang, they all picked up their pieces, put them back where they belonged, and streamed through the wide doors of Valhalla. There they settled down for another feast, and once again were the best of friends. Thus the heroes kept trim and fit, and had a glorious time while they were at it. Here's the pictures. So uh, this is a little bit strange. So what they do is they get all, they eat, feast, they get all worked up. Then they go outside and fight and uh, with swords, um, maim each other, and then pick up the pieces and then go back and put their pieces back together and then feast some more and then fight some more. Um, and that is the end of that. That's a very general myth, just telling you about Valhalla, the Valkyries, and just some other things but the important thing to take from that a couple things one from that you probably can tell that viking culture was rather violent just as as the myth was a little bit violent like um also notice how those characters have stood the test of time and have trickled down into just regular everyday life for example thor as a comic book hero would not have existed had a couple thousand years ago, some Vikings made up the myth of him. All right. Tomorrow, I will read you a little bit about Thor. But I hope you enjoyed this reading. Um, and yes, make sure you get all your other activities done, particularly, and then actually get make sure you get the fairy tale writing done, or not the writing, but like the pre-write activity. I'm going to be starting to go over that. Good luck.